Do you remember Applejack cereal? As a kid, it was my cereal of choice, so I decided to make a candle that looks like a bowl of it. Yes, this delicious looking bowl of cereal is in fact a candle, and I'm gonna show you how to make one. Let's get into it. I'm gonna be using this Nick Pro silicone mold kit I ordered off of Amazon and used once already. A hot glue gun and some circular pieces of cereal. I ordered this kit because it came with a housing kit, which are these plastic pieces that you can pretty much adjust to create whatever size mold that you need. As long as you have these four corners, you can make it as small as you want, something like this, or larger, which I know I'm gonna need. And after laying out the pieces, I immediately realized this was not going to be the right size for me. Much better. So now that I have this all assembled, I'm gonna go ahead and use these binder clips that were included in the package. I also had larger ones so I can kind of secure it even more because the last time I used this, it was a mess. It seeped through and was not very fun. Okay, so now that that's all done, we're going to want to use our hot glue gun to both seal the inside and the outside. This stuff is tricky and it will find any possible hole to seep through, so definitely take your time. And I really hope that you have a better hot glue gun than I do. I bought this from the 89 cent store way long ago and it is on its last leg really considering getting a new one. I probably should have for this video, but you know, lesson learned. And if you don't have an adjustable housing like this, you can get a roll of acetate on Amazon for pretty cheap and you'll be able to create your own shape. You'll just need to hot glue it down like I'm doing on a sheet like this. And once that's all done, you're gonna wanna go ahead and take your cereal pieces and start gluing them to the bottom of your, inside of your mold casing. Now you don't want to use too much hot glue. You definitely want to make sure it's secure, but you also don't want to enclose the little circle because it's going to be difficult to take out. So fast forwarding a little bit, here's what my layout looks like. And I'm just going to go through and press to make sure that they are secure because again, this hot glue gun is giving me trouble. For the next part, you're gonna need something to measure with, and I like using popsicle sticks because you can toss it when you're done, and a two-part silicone rubber liquid. I'll link this in the description. Now, if you have a scale, this is definitely a time to use it. I like to use a scale because I suck at eyeing things and it just makes it easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and tear the cup, and I'm gonna be working in fluid ounces because we are using a liquid. And I believe about three ounces should be good to cover the cereal. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour 1.5 ounces of A. I'm also gonna get some paper towels ready because I typically make a mess. And something to note with these AB parts, although you wanna mix them both in a container to create your silicone mold, you definitely wanna make sure that the tops are separate and you're not contaminating one with the other. Then I'm gonna do the same for part B, 1.5 ounces. And I just could not get that 0.1 ounce, so I'm just gonna leave it at 2.9 because I know I'll end up going over. You really don't have to have it exact. Um, so now we're going to mix for the instructions say three minutes for mine, but it's usually about three to five minutes until the two fluids are completely combined. If you're using a green color, you can see it change. If you're using a clear, you can kind of tell the difference between the two. One's a little less thick and you won't see any streaks. It should look like this. Typically after mixing, you'll have air bubbles and they'll kind of dissipate on their own, but I like to give it a good tap to eliminate the air bubbles a little quicker. And you have a 30 minute working window, so I like to give it a minute to sit before pouring. Once the bubbles are reduced, I'm going to start pouring at a very low height, just to again, reduce the amount of air bubbles that are going to happen. 
because if they get trapped in the mold, you will see them in your mold and you don't want that. So I'm gonna slowly make my way around the mold and the idea is to cover all of the cereal pieces so that it's one clean layer of silicone rubber. Once I got like halfway through pouring the cup, I realized three ounces was not going to be enough and I would need maybe one to two more, which is totally fine. Again, 30 minute window and it takes only three minutes to whip up another batch. And here's my two additional. And just like before, loads of the cereal and cover. So this is what it should look like. Nice, clean, flat layer. Hopefully you're working on a flat surface. The air will disappear on its own and we're gonna let this sit for six hours. And we're back. Of course, it depends on your kind of mold, but this one set in six hours. As you can see, it's firm to the touch. And we're just gonna go ahead and demold this. And as you can see, I was super careful about the amount of hot glue I put and it still tried to make its way outside of the house. So error on the side of caution and be extra with the hot glue. It will save you a headache and potentially more silicone rubber that you end up wasting. It should be clean. Uh, this is just from the last time I used this uh, and here's where it tried to seep through. You can be a little rough with this. It has a lot of give. That's where the rubber comes in. So just go ahead and detach your pieces. I don't really care what the sides look like. That's totally fine. What I'm most concerned about is the bottom layer and the mid layer. And the beauty of working on these like plastic sheets, I think I got it from the dollar store, is that this stuff just comes straight off and taking the mold off is even easier. And if you're having trouble, it is bendable. So look at that, nice and clean. And the mold looks really good. As you can see, it did cover uh, some of the pieces a little bit, but for the most part, you can still see the cereal pieces, which is what we want. And if it does cover a thin layer, that's totally fine. You could use a box cutter um, or any kind of sharp tool just to kind of cleanly get that piece out and make your circle. So what I'm doing here is I'm pushing from the bottom. That is the easiest route to go. And again, you can really like push it. It's gonna be fine. And you really wanna grip the cereal to kind of just pull it loose. There's gonna be some suction, but it should come clean off. See if you can get a little closer. You can see all the detail inside, which is awesome. So again, really pull from the back, or sorry, push from the back. And of course this one snapped. And if your cereal breaks, that's okay. It just means you have to clean out your mold a little bit. It's, you just don't want crumbs in in your actual candle. And here I'm using the box cutter to, again, kind of make a clean cut around where there should be no silicone. Um, and to also get this middle piece to be clean so that way I can pop out the cereal easier. This is what happens when you put a little too much hot glue. And when you're done popping out all the pieces, this is what your mold should look like. Looks a little weird now, but trust me, it'll look better later. On to the next part. So I'd found the exact bowl I had in mind for this project, clear glass at my local Dollar Tree. So I was super excited when I found it. Then I also have a ton of metal spoons. Didn't want to go and buy another one. Not necessary, but please do not use plastic. That is a fire hazard. And I was out of wicks, so I went to my local Michaels and picked up these cotton jar wicks that I got for like five bucks or so. And I had a ton of soy wax still. I use soy wax because it is the cleanest wax that you could burn aside from like beeswax. I have a dog who's super sensitive to other stuff, so I highly recommend soy wax. Then I have these candle science sample scents that I've had for the longest time. Highly recommend this brand. They're one ounce each. I have cinnamon and vanilla. 
I'm considering combining the two to make a unique scent, haven't decided quite yet. Then I also have this pumpkin souffle, which smells absolutely amazing on its own. Then we're gonna need something to dye our cereal wax. Uh, I have these dye blocks that came in a candle making kit that I got a while ago. The candle kit was called Hearth and Harbor, which I also recommend as a first time kit. It had everything you need and good quality stuff. Then we're gonna need our metal melting pots. I have this one, which also came that very same kit. I use it every time I make candles. And it also came with this rubber place mat thing so you don't ruin your surface because it gets very hot. Then I have additional metal tins. I think I also got these from the Dollar Tree because we're gonna have multiple colors so it'll make it easier. Then you're gonna need something to measure the temperature of your wax. I have this infrared thermometer. It's not super accurate but it kind of helps because I have this one which came with that same kit that I was talking about. It's a candy thermometer. Works well, but sometimes it's a little difficult to see from like a distance. So you basically just take the clip and attach it to the side of your melting pot. And of course we're gonna need the beautiful mold we made earlier. And I'm highly gonna recommend a scale for when we're uh, measuring out our fragrance and this evil hot glue gun. I swear I will have a new one for a new video at some later time. So I'm gonna head and turn that on while we prep our bowl. These wicks say that they're good for a container that's like 2.2 inches, 2.25. I know I have a bowl that's like six inches, so we're gonna need two. And I'm just placing the spoon dead center. And here's a cool trick for our wicks. If you have like a smaller container, uh, you can use a straw to basically make the wick a little bit more sturdy. That way you can apply pressure and actually stick it to the bottom of your jar. It really is, again, for a smaller jar where you can't really stick your hand in it. And since I'm out of glue dots, I'm just gonna use the hot glue to adhere this to the bottom of my bowl. And I'm gonna have one on each side of the spoon um, with a bit of space between the wick and the spoon. And I'm just gonna press down because I can get to the bottom to make sure it is stuck. And you just pull the straw right off. And I have these popsicle sticks with holes in them. They come like this, you can buy a pack or you could just get popsicle sticks and make your own hole in it. But basically this just keeps the wick from falling over into your wax after you pour it. So I'm just gonna do this on both sides and leave this here for now. We'll figure out the rest later. So back to the scents, I was still trying to figure out which one to use. Here's another thing you can do if you're struggling like me. You can use Q-tips to swab two different scents and then put them together to see which one you'd like. So this is my cinnamon. Just gonna go ahead and swap that as much as possible. Here's my vanilla. Then I'm gonna take those and just kind of like wait a few minutes, you know, make sure that they're really together and then stick them in a container. You could put them in a Ziploc bag or just like an airtight container and you should smell what they smell like together. And I really like this combo, so that's what I'm gonna use. I didn't record this. This was before we put the wicks into our bowl. But to figure out how much wax we're gonna need, what you can do is you can take your container and pour some water into it and then measure it. That way you'll see how much it can hold. And basically you're converting the amount of water in ounces to wax in ounces. So I actually do have a calculator that does this because it's not an exact one-to-one -one because the wax is thicker, but this calculator can tell you how much wax you'll need and then how much fragrance you'll need based on the strength of the fragrance you want your candle to have. So I'll need 11 ounce of wax and one ounce fragrance. I'll link the calculator in the description so you can have it as well. Now that we know how much we need, we're just gonna go ahead and measure out our wax. I have this crappy container I've been using forever, which is breaking apart and it's pretty small. So we're gonna have to do this in batches. And at this point, it does look like a lot of wax, but it will melt down and it'll be precise for your jar. And I swear I can count, <laughs> I forgot an ounce. So adding that in now. Of all the wax, I'm gonna go ahead and take some of that and parse it out into a separate container because this is going to be our colored wax. And that's what these smaller separables are for. 
So I took maybe about an ounce or so out and then I'm gonna divide that again into another bowl because we're gonna have two different colors for our apple jack looking cereal, which is orange and green. So that looks like about half and I'm just eyeballing at this point. It, it really, it doesn't have to be precise. And that looks to be about good enough. I have the Swiss army knife that I use specifically for candle making. I typically just use the knife to cut out the portion of die that I need from the die blocks. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Again, using orange and green colors. So it's kind of just like shaving down a crayon, which this one reminds me of. And I'm only going to do a little bit because I have such little wax and the color is probably going to be pretty vibrant even with this much. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same with my orange block now. And you're 100% gonna wanna do this on a surface that's not going to get ruined. I tend to do things on my granite countertop a lot and my boyfriend is always yelling at me. So make sure your surface is protected. And if you do get some on your hands, it's not the worst thing in the world. As you can see, it's pretty stained, but it'll come off with soap and water. And back to our jar. So since my popsicle sticks were not long enough to sit on the bowl, I used these two straws, which I taped together in order to make this little support system, you can use anything really, two pencils, anything that's long enough to hold. Now, you don't wanna cut too much of the wick. I'm just gonna snip enough because it keeps falling over and it's a little too heavy, but this should hold for now. On to the fragrance. So I'm gonna use this plastic cup to measure out my fragrance. I can either clean it and reuse it for another time, but it's kinda of hard to get the fragrance out of something once it's in, so I'll probably just toss it. I'm gonna go ahead and tear this, and I know I need an ounce. I'm thinking because the cinnamon is so strong, I'm gonna do more vanilla than cinnamon, so probably like 70% vanilla and 30% cinnamon. I'm just gonna pour this vanilla at 0.7. And at this point, it's important to note when you're working with fragrance, you really want to make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. I have my windows open and it still smells very strong. It's going to take a while for the smell to kind of dissipate. Now I'm going to add my 0.3 fluid ounces of cinnamon. And of course I went over 0.1 fluid ounces, but it's okay. It'll be fine. So off camera, I boiled some water and I'm just adding them to two different pots now. The larger one's gonna be for the white wax or the milk wax and the smaller one for the colored wax, which are the cereal pieces. You don't need a ton, you just need enough to be able to boil the wax down. So here I am placing in my wax and the smaller one is definitely going to melt quicker. So you wanna keep an eye on that. And once it starts melting, immediately add your color and I'm gonna mix this because I want it to be well incorporated with the wax. And don't forget to mix your other one. I should have done these separate, but I was being impatient because it will start to clump up. Now I took my colored wax away from the heat because it was done boiling and about a 135 is good for a pouring temperature for the wax. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my time to pour this into our mold. You want to make sure that it fills so that it's flush with the top and doesn't really overspill or overflow because it's gonna be hard to get out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and again, take my time. If it does overflow, it's not the worst thing in the world. We'll worry about that during the demolding process. So my white wax is still boiling. I'm keeping an eye on that too. This is where the multitasking kind of comes in. And if you're starting out, you should definitely do these separately so you're not juggling two different things at the same time. And now my wax is at a good temperature to add in my fragrance. For soy wax, it's about a 185. So once it is at 185, I'm taking it out of the pot and to stop it from boiling. And now I'm just gonna continuously mix that fragrance into the wax. Ideally, again, we're trying to get it down to the 135. So it's a pouring temp. It's not quite there yet. So I'm gonna continue mixing it. And now it's ready. So once you're at a temperature that is good for pouring, you're gonna wanna pour it directly into your container. 
in a nice even stream. Don't really move it around a lot. Try to keep it consistent and low to the container to try to reduce any air bubbles or anything like that. And at this point, this is where your house is really going to smell like the fragrance. It will be very strong at first, but again, it will go away eventually. And I thought at this point I hated the smell because it was so strong. I was like, oh God, the combo wasn't good, but it turned out okay. So I'm just gonna slowly push this off to the side and let that sit while I clean out my pot. Good tip is you want to clean out your containers while they are still wet and rubbing alcohol is a miracle solution. So I'm going to go ahead and do my second color, melt that down and then add in my green dye now and mix that up. Slowly pouring it into my mold. This time my hands were much more shaky, but we'll deal with that when the time comes. And look at that, it's starting to harden. Now, a few moments later, our colored wax is hardened. We're ready to take that out of the mold. So just like before, when we were taking the actual cereal out, I'm gonna push from the back and pop that right out. And the detail looks so cool. So happy with the way this turned out. So I'm gonna continue doing that. When you overflow the wax, like I was suggesting not to do, it's going to create this suction and what you could do is take a sharp object and kind of carve out where that middle hole should be and it'll pop out just fine. So I'm gonna fast forward a little bit and here are my pieces outside. I did break a few, but I'm still gonna use them. Back to the milk portion. It's hardened a bit, but it's not fully set. So I'm gonna start taking off the support contraption that I made, but you just wanna be careful because at this point the wicks can still move around but the surface is kind of set you can touch it like it should be good but it's going to be easier to push the cereal pieces into it and if by chance your candle has completely solidified that's totally fine you can use a heat gun or even a blow dryer on low just to kind of get the wax to melt again you'll see it glisten and you know it's ready but I'm just gonna go ahead and take those cereal pieces and softly push them in. Not too much pressure because the wax cereal pieces can break and we don't want that. So I'm just going through and taking the pieces and kind of like randomly putting them together. You don't wanna do it too planned because then it looks, you know, not natural. So you can just kind of take them and needle nose pliers or tweezers or something where you can grip the pieces and kind of like place them in will definitely be easier than trying to use your fingers. What you don't want to do like I did, please learn from my mistakes, is I heated the top while my pieces were in and the coloring from the cereal got into the milk, which is okay because that kind of happens naturally with cereal. But I lost the detail in some of my cereal pieces. So what I did was use my sharp edge for my knife. I just stippled the aeration detail back and it was fine. And once your candle has completely set, you're gonna wanna cut your wicks. You don't wanna cut them too short and you should leave about a fourth of an inch. And there you go. Now you know how to make a cereal bowl candle that both looks and smells delicious. Maybe it even smells like your childhood. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and thanks for watching.